Yeah, I think it's 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 becoming uh, you know a pretty big issue. Obviously, you know when when you th say things like eliminating the kickoff, well, the next the next thing to get eliminated is me, you know, and so that's obviously a major concern for me. No, I'm all for player safety. I'm all for making the game safer. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, I worry that uh, we overstep that a little bit. You know, it, it is still a contact sport. Um, uh, you know, I think we have to teach kids, even our own players, our players, better techniques. Um, you know, there's been 40-some uh, concussions on kickoffs in the past couple of years, but the majority of those concussions that are happening, not because of the collisions on, you know, against a wedge, it's, because it's by the tackler. It's the guy doing the tackling. So I, I think we got to, you know, we got to start by teaching guys to play with better technique, and that'll make it safer for them. Last year we were talking about the changes as far as the extra point. Mm -hmm. How do you think that went over? And I mean, uh, do, do you think that there was something that were, did you have to pay a lot more attention to it? Was it was it a different thing to be able to consider every game? It really wasn't that much of a different thing for us. You know, we practiced it more. We did a lot of it in the off season in terms of kicking. Um, you know, Mike didn't miss a PAT. We had one blocked in the opener, but he didn't miss one. But I think you saw it, it affected outcomes of games. It affected the outcome of the AFC Championship game, you know, with New England missing the PAT there late uh, in the fourth quarter. And Goskowski, and he's has been the most accurate kicker, you know, one of the most accurate, reliable kickers in the league. So it, it adds a little element, uh, a little bit more of uh, an uncomfortable element, I think, for these kickers in certain situations. And it's not as automatic as it used to be. Um, but again, it's just about adapting, you know, and I, I think, you know, I don't know what the official percentage was, 94-ish percent, I think. So it, I think it dropped down some, um, and maybe that did what the league thought it would do. As you go to camp and, and putting together your units, what kind of a player are you looking for? What kind of person are you looking for? Because I have to think you could, some guys play football well, but they're not a special teamer. Yeah, I, I think that is true. Number one, they got to have the desire. Um, they got to have the right attitude. They got to, you know, we, we take it very seriously here. You know, uh, um, you know, I want uh, the ability of, of, of not only what these guys have physically, but what they do mentally, the, the mental toughness that they show too to come out. And not, it's not for everybody. There's no question about it. Um, but most of those guys aren't on our team. Um, we're going to keep the guys that do show the ability both mentally and physically, to do the things that I ask them to do or that the head coach asks them to do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And that comes from knowing what to do, first of all, knowing the plays, knowing the schemes, and then number two, knowing how to do it, playing with the correct techniques. Some of the times, guys don't have a lot of experience when they do it, and they go into what I call survive mode. So when the games come or practice happen, they forget everything that they're being taught, and you know, they just rely on instinct. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for guys that can put stuff together um, sequentially without a play. Well, we've been very fortunate here for whatever's been going on now, six years, I guess, five years, six years, that these three guys have been together, Clark, Kevin, and, and Mike, have been together. Um, you know, at some point, I know the band's going to have to break up, you know, and, and it's happened before, it'll happen again. Uh, I don't know who or when that'll be. I don't know if it'll be this year. I don't know if it'll be two years or three years. I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, but, but there's a level of comfort uh, in having all three of those guys, you know, because we've got a lot of skins on the wall together. Uh, and there's a lot of trust that goes into that. And on top of all that, there are three really good guys to work with. I mean, and, and that figures into it. I mean, when you're with these guys, you know, eight, nine hours every day, you got to be able to coexist, uh, you, you know, as, as people. And they're not only players to me, they're my friends, you know, and, and, and I really, uh, that, that's a, a deep thing for me. Um, so I feel the same about all those guys, you know, we, we, we've had people in like this year, we have Zach Hawker, for instance, come in to uh, challenge Mike a little bit. And there's no, there's no silver lining behind that. We usually bring it, we've always brought another kicker in because I, and it's for a reason, I, I think with the way that we practice now, I can control uh, certain things, meaning, uh, Kevin can't kick every day. Mike can't kick every day. Zach can't kick every day. But it's much easier for me to, uh, when I need, need a replication of a punt, we use the machine, you know, the jugs machine for that. But it's not as realistic um, to do the same thing to see a kickoff or a field goal. So that's why we bring two kickers in every year. Uh, but we're fortunate, to, I feel uh, fortunate to have somebody like Zach in here. Um, Zach came through, had a, had a strong spring. Uh, and ultimately, it's gonna, what's going to play out is how they perform in preseason games, you know, when, when the uh, real pressure's on the line. So I, I feel very good about where we're at with all three of those spots, um, you know, and, and having the fourth guy in Zach. I, I feel good about that. We've got to keep developing even backup guys, you know, backup snappers and, 
you know, teams have lost games because of their inability to, if their long snapper did get hurt, their inability to snap a ball. So we got to keep the continue to develop players we currently have on our team to, for those roles too. Adam Jones is a very unique player. What does mm -hmm. it say about him that at this stage of his career he still wants to return and he still has mm -hmm. the passion and the determination to do it well? Well, I think those are the, the two words you just mentioned are the big ones, passion and determination. Um, Adam is one of the most competitive players I think I've ever been around. The, the most competitive guy, you know, before I got here was Steve Smith. And I, and I think he shows that all the time when you watch him play in Baltimore. And, and Adam is very similar. Um, because I think they, they, they go out there thinking the cards or the, the, the deck is always stacked against them. And so the competitiveness, I think, is what drives him. The doubt or people doubting him is what drives him. And, uh, and that's something I think we have to feed off of and that our players feed off of that. You know, now Adam has to learn how to control that. You know, he has to be able to channel that in the right directions to you know, make it beneficial for not only for him, but for us as a team. Uh, but that's, that's what makes him special is his competitiveness. Yeah, we have, we have several guys I think they're going to be in competition for that spot. It's a good question. You know, Tyler did it some in college. Um, you know, he was uh, reasonably successful at it. You know, sometimes there are guys who don't have great success in college at it that, that you know, flourish in the NFL for whatever reason. Um, you know, there's another guy. The other guy we got to see is Mario Alford. Um, you know, he uh, uh, did a ton of opportunities a year ago. Um, his opportunities came in the preseason. You know, I'm big on when we get to the regular season, I'm all about developing players. When we get to the regular season, I'm about playing guys who are going to play in games. Or, you know, so he didn't get a lot of reps in practice during the season. Because um, I needed Adam to get them, I needed Brandon Tate to get them, I needed you know all these other guys to get these reps. So the, the preseason is going to be huge for somebody like Mario Alford uh, and Tyler Boyd to see even if some of those some of those guys can supplant Brandon or Adam. That's a good question. Just to deal with a lot of unique players and special mm -hmm. teams guys trying to prove that they belong on the team mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, the kickers are unique. What is it like on a day-to-day -day basis to just deal with guys that? that Put it on the line like that. That's the best part of my job. I, I think is you know next to Coach Lewis, I'm the guy that deals with the whole team. I get to deal with you know 90 guys, and it takes me time to get a feel for everybody. You know, but I think it's a, I think it's the most important part of my job too. It's to know what buttons I need to push, or, or you know or what you know what gets one guy going versus you know what I can't say or can't do with another player, and that's the most challenging thing to me. Uh, but it's also the best part of my job because it's it's constantly different every day, and I'm dealing with different issues every single day. Um, and, and it's it's it is it's a great part of the, my profession, and I have such respect for all the other special teams coaches around the league because I know they're all doing the same thing. Uh, but I think it's the best part of my job is being able to deal with every one of these guys.